website, ProudBlackBuddhist, www.proudblackbuddhist.org, the most comprehensive website in the world that's inclusive of black history, culture, and language. Look here to see our most important black Buddhist lecture, The Original Christians Were Black and Buddhists. Enjoy. The facts and history of the Christian religion and its black Buddhist connection is not some wild idea or concept proposed by Anthony L. Elmer. We learn our facts from the famed 18th century British historian, archaeologist, and scientist Sir Godfrey Higgins who wrote about this in his book titled The Anna Eclipses. Now, The Anna Eclipses is a book which is titled said an attempt to draw the veil of the Thetic Isis or an inquiry into the origin of languages, nations, and religions. It is a lengthy two-volume treatise written after his death in 1836. Now, in the Anacopsis, Godfrey Higgins writes about the Black Buddhist religion. And this is what he said, quote, The time has now arrived when it becomes proper to enter upon the examination of the doctrines of the celebrated Buddha of India, which were the foundations of all the mysticism of the Western nations, as well as those which have, which have seen of Krishna, and from these two were supplied the superstitions which became engrafted into the religion of Jesus Christ, unquote. See, this British historian writes that the foundations of all the mysticism of Western nations come from the black Buddha in India. See, what we know as the religion of Jesus Christ all comes from the religion of the Buddha. This idea that all the teachings of Christian religions come from the teachings of the Black Buddha of India is verified via archaeology, anthropology, literary science, and genetic science. Today, we want you to stop the video, go get your notes, and confirm many of the things we say. Now, let us bring this concept into a 20 first century paradigm. The reason that we do not know about the black Buddhist connection to the Christian religion is because the Buddha was black and it is because of racism and prejudice that we do not know these history and facts. The most difficult reality about these black Buddhist facts of history and science is that those who oppose the inclusion of the facts of black science and history are black people who have been trained by white people who rewrote history and black people out of the religion. Now, the difficult part of this dissertation is talking to most Christians about the subject. Most Christians do not deal in science, history, archaeology, anthropology, genetic science, or literary science. The writing that most Christians refer to is only the Bible, and most Christians refuse to discuss subjects outside of the Bible. We call this apocryphal. Now, biblical apocryphal is a set of texts included in the Latin Vulgate and the Septuagint, but not in the Hebrew Bible. While Catholic tradition considers the text to be deuterocanonical, Protestants considers them apocryphal. Thus, Protestant Bibles 
do not include the books within the Old Testament, but have often included them in a separate section. Now, for the sake of this black Buddhist lecture, we use the word apocryphal to describe Christian writings in that we only find such evidence as believed as true, but such evidence is only authenticated in the Bible, but no other sources. You see, many of the things that we write about, or when you come to the issue of Jesus Christ, Jesus is only apocryphal in that there is no reference to a Jesus outside of the Bible. Now, let me venture into sacred and fearful territory in regards to apocryphal. In regards to the story of Jesus Christ, there exists no evidence of a Jesus Christ outside of the Bible or the first 30 years of his life. The worst thing that I can say in our modern American culture is to bring up facts. Now, the fact that we, that you, to think about the words archaeology, archaeological, anthropological, literary science, literary science, uh, connects Buddha and Christ. Recently, scientists made an important archaeological discovery that puts the Buddha back as far as 650 B.C. or before anyone had ever heard of a Jesus Christ. Certainly, the original Jesus Christ was a black man. However, archaeological evidence shows Jesus uh, as a white man in the second century AD. We're going to get to that. Now, let us discuss the one fact that white people, Asians, and religious experts try to keep away from the light of day. The one thing that everyone hides and keeps hidden is the Buddha or Buddha's relationship in Africa. This is the point if you keep the Buddha out of Africa then you can hide the Buddha's relationship or the black Buddha's connection to Christian history. See, let me speak from a matter of fact. White people, black religious leaders, Asian Buddhist teachers, all keep Buddha out of Africa and none of them would teach or share the history and culture of Buddhism in Africa. This is the point when you can connect Buddha in Africa is when you can connect black Buddhist history with Christian history. Now, for all of my black Buddhist Nitrin listeners who are members of the SGI, Nitrin Shoshu and Nitrin Shu, you think or do you think these Japanese want black people to learn about your black Buddhist history? If you learn about your black Buddhist history, you will come into a new and different understanding of the Christian religion. Now, in regard to the Buddhist religion, the Christian religions do not have archaeology, anthropology, literary science, and genetic science. Let us approach religion from the standpoint of history. Now, let us talk about the father of history whose name was Herodotus. Now, why is Herodotus the father of history? You see, Herodotus is known as the father of history because he was the first historian to collect and systematically document events and create an account. He compiled these accounts 
and to his single major work known as, quote, the history. Now, Herodotus lived about 484 B.C. to 425 B.C. This means that Herodotus lived over 200 years after the death of the Buddha. Imagine the age of the United States of America and then something coming up over 200 years after the age of, Amer of America. Things, a lot can change. Now, this white historian wrote down the black Buddhist history. Now, the absolute writings that the father of history Herodotus writes is that Please understand that rather the Lotus Sutra is the highest teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Now, the sh highest teachings of the Lotus Sutra did not reach China until 1,000 years after the death of the Buddha and another 400 years or 1,400 years after the death of the Buddha before the Lotus Sutra reached Japan. Now, let us delve into black Buddhist history and its relationship to Africa. Now let me explain why white people do not tell black people about black Buddhist history in Africa. It is only in the black Buddhist history that connects black people to the two Ethiopians. Now let us be clear. White races, Asian races, and black Christian historians are not going to connect or reveal black people to the two Ethiopians. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you the greatest sin in the Buddhist religion. You see, the greatest sin in the Buddhist religion is its black history explication. Let me stress this point very, very clear. Buddhist history is black history. When you learn your black Buddhist history, you will learn the black Buddhist connection to Christian history. Now, let's kind of get into a little history. And I want you to Google some words. Now, the first word I want you to Google, I want you to Google a river. Now, this river is called the Sariwati River. Now, this river dried up about 4,000 years ago. From this river emerged a black people and a culture twice as large as Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. These black people along the Sariwati River built a city so complex that the world had to wait 2,000 more years to the rise of the Roman civilization for sanitation and town planning to reach a comparable level. You see, what white people often teach is that black people grew up uneducated, uncivilized, and they didn't become civilized until white people came on the scene. But when you study the Sarawati River culture, you will learn that Africa or black people had a civilization with running bathroom, running water, toilets, a sewer system, dynamic urban planning, 2,000 years before white people even had such things. This civilization of the Sarawati River is also known as the Harappan culture. Now, these are two names for the civilization. 
is called the Indus Valley and is commonly known as the Arafan civilization. This is what white racists try hard to prove. White racists attempt to use history to support white superiority and the inferiority of black people. When you have evidence of blacks who were scientific, cultural, and far advanced in science thousands of years before whites, there is silence. Now, why is the Sariwati River and the Harappan culture important? This is important because we find that this black advanced sophisticated nation in India, whereas the same black people would later come to create another civilization called the Magadha Empire. This empire was built from the people and the culture of the Harappan Empire. Now, we know the name of the founder of the Magadha Empire. His name was Sisu Naga. From Sisu Naga, we come to know a black Naga king who was a contemporary of the Buddha. His name was Bimbasara. We can empirically and absolute logically prove that there were no people known as white people in India at this point of history. Now, let us move over 200 years after the death of the Buddha and we come into written evidence of the white historian Herodotus. Herodotus wrote about both India and Africa. Now the Greeks called black people Ethiopians or burnt skin. Now, Platerus, Alexander the Great, Diogenes, Lateras, Strabo, Philos, Judeos, Titus, Flavius, Clemens, and all white historians confirm about the Buddhists and Buddhism coming to Greece, Rome, Ethiopia, Aksum, Egypt, Persia, Babylonia, Arabia, Jerusalem, and almost all of the world. You see, there are two literary statements we want to quote from Herodotus and, and quote, quote, upon his return to Greece, they gathered around and asked, tell us about the great land of blacks called Ethiopia. And Herodotus said, quote, there are two great Ethiopian nations. One is Sin and the other and the other is Egypt. That's from Dorius, Greek historian, 100 BC. Herodotus writes about India, quote, all the tribes I mentioned, their skin are much the same color, much like the Ethiopians. Now this is from the history of Herodotus. Now, this is what British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about Herodotus and Buddhism. Herodotus speaks of Nero as the cradle of the gymnosophists or Buddhists. Higgins write, quote, We see here that the followers of Buddha are called gymnosophists. It has been observed that the Nero of Ethiopia was Nero. This is confirmed by the observation of Heliodorus that the priests of Nero were of a humane character and were called Gymnosophists. This humane character that he's talking about is the Christian of the brotherly love of the Buddhists. Now, when we come to Herodotus, we are over 400 years before the world ever heard of a re of the religions called Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We at this point, based on Herodotus, learned that there were two Ethiopians. Now, 
let us connect the two Ethiopians, India and Africa, with, with a people and a history. Before there was ever a white man to describe a black man as Ethiopian, there were black people who named themselves and they were called Kush or Kushites. Now, the kingdom of Kush was an ancient kingdom in Nubia located at the confluence of the Blue Nile the White Nile and River Abara in what is now Sudan and South Sudan. We are at 400 BC and the Greek historian Herodotus writes that Miro was the cradle of the gymnast of Buddhist. Now, how do we connect the Buddhists from India to Nubians in Africa? exactly who were the Nubians. Now, the term Kushite is a general term that refers to Nubians, Sutra, Neotes, Egyptians, Andu, Canaanites, and afro samarian rulers of Mesopotamia. See, linguistic and archaeological evidence suggests that the Dravidian prescribes held to a religion that reflects proto saharan beliefs and practices. Now, let's go back to the Greeks. Now, there was an Afro-Greek writer named Homer who alluded to the diversity and unity of the Kushite Empire when he wrote, quote, a race divided when the sloping rays, the rising and setting of the sun rays, before Homer's time in the 8th century BC, there was a time but a vast dimension, dominion that stretched from West Africa to India and it was dominated by rulers and priests who were ethnically Kushite. Now, this is what you must understand about the Buddhist religion. Early Buddhist practitioners, the Buddhist were Kushites. They are different names for the same people in India. They are known as Dravidian. Now, the Dravidian and the Nubian are the same people. All these people were Afro-Asian and they spoke the same language. Let me give you a point in the history. The Kushites ruled the world. And in Japan, they were called the Anu, or the original people of Japan. They were in China. They were in Asia. They were all over the world. Now, these Japanese who teach us Nichiren Buddhism are not going to teach black people that the original people of Japan were Kushite or the black and new. The one thing that whites, Asians, and blacks who are trained by white people make sure that black people do not learn is about the Buddhist religion. Is the fact that Buddhism from India and the Nubians of Kushites in Africa are one and the same people who spoke the same language. When Herodotus visited Nubia, or the capital of Kush, he wrote that Miro was the cradle of the gymnosophists or the Buddhists. Now, the foundation of what later became the Christian Bible came from the Buddhists as revealed by Godfrey Higgins in his 1836 book, The Anaclipsis. Before there was ever the thought of a Christian Bible, our ancestors, the black Buddhists, wrote the book of Genesis. What Christians have and the Bible is apocryphal writings. Now, we black Buddhists have archaeological evidence. For example, I was talking to a black Buddhist friend, Otin, in Atlanta, 
And he mentioned about an African American SGI Buddhist leader who is a judge in Atlanta. This brother told the SGI members to watch out for someone like me because we were the devil. See, the point is black Christians and black Buddhists were called presenting archaeological evidence as something from the devil. We who are proud black Nichiren Buddhists call this Namu or to awaken to Myo. Myo means correct and it also means to open. Now the word Ho means law. Renge means lotus or represents the law of cause and effect. The word Kyo means to overcome delusion. What the religions of the day teach is delusion. This lecture again is called the original Christians were black Buddhists from India. In regards to Christ, what is not taught about Christ is the fact there were two Christs in history. There is the African Christ, which is the original Christ, and there is the Roman Christ. Let me make this very, very clear. We proud black Buddhists love, respect, and honor the African Christ. There is clearly a, a history, culture, and African background of the African Christ that has been written out of history. For those of you who would like to know the difference between the African Christ and the Roman Christ, the difference is Abraham. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. It is British historian Godfrey Higgins who teach us that Abraham was a Brahmin and Abraham means a Brahmin. And the teachings of the two Christes is the teachings of the African Christ and the white Christ was the teachings of Abraham or the Brahmin. On page 256 of the Anacrypsis, Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, The real, true, conscientious Buddhists must have been an exact prototype of Jesus Christ, as I shall prove both in doctrine and practice. Unquote. You see, the real and original Christians in world history were the black Buddhists. For the record, before any white man ever thought of being a Christian, the real and original Christians were black Buddhists. Now, on page 230 in the Anacrypsis, Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, from the origin, for the origin of the cross, we must go to the Buddhist and the Lama of Tibet. In Tibet, this cross is called a Dajuri. Now, the Af unquote, now the African cross of the Anak in ancient Egypt come from, came from the Buddhist teachings. The cross in Roman Christianity did not become official until King Constantine of Rome endorsed the cross hundreds of years after the death of Christ. Now, while the cross is the foundation of the Christian religion, the cross in Buddhism symbolized the Buddhist concept of enlightenment. It was the African Christians of Buddhists who came up with the cross. Now, please note that the word Christ and Buddha means the same thing. The word Jesus represents an individualized level of enlightenment and in Christian experience. See, Christ, on the other hand, represents an epitaph in the explanation of the quality of enlightenment reached by Jesus. For this reason, 
In the context of Western mysteries, Jesus represents the perfect mood, the inner workings of the purified substance in the vehicle in which the path of awakening, the level of Christ consciousness takes place. Now, the word consciousness, now in Sirach, Messiah, and in Greek, Christos means the anointed one. As for the word Nazarene, the meaning is, quote, he who reveals what is hidden. Now, as far as the word Messiah, it has two meanings. The Christ or the anointed one and the measured one. Unquote. Now, please note that Jesus in Hebrew means redemption and the word Nazareth means the truth. Thus, the Nazarene means the truth. Jesus had attained Nazaretha, perfect spiritual enlightenment, and that he also taught this path to others. Hence, Jesus and his disciples were Nazarenes, or Nazarenians, meaning followers of the mystic path to God, or the pure being. The original apostles used the term Jesus the Nazarenean, Messiah, which means Jesus the Nazarenean, the Christ, the anointed one. A tone and enlightenment is one and the same word. Remember, now, his last name is Christ. The first name is Jesus. The middle name is Nazarene. Now, hence, the name Jesus Christ of Nazarene means the anointed one the giver of truth, the bringer and the source of redemption, the revealer of what is hidden, the enlightened one, who has the gift to awaken one. The teachers of Christ and Buddha was originally based on the teachings of enlightenment. Now, let us move back to that famous river that is that dried up. It's called a Sariwati. Now, let's talk about the Harappan the, in the Nevada civilization. Now, this is the major scene of white historians. 2,000 years before any white people had indoor toilets, urban planning, and sophisticated cities, black people called Kushites ruled the world. What white people do not what white people do is disregard archaeological and evidence and what you see in the movies about black people is that they project black people as natives like in the Tarzan and the understanding that we have of black people is a part is people without an education, a civilization, and written history. Now, those of you who are Nitrin Buddhists, the 13th century Japanese sage Nichiren writes in the Ghost Show, and that's called The Opening of the Eyes. And Nichiren writes, quote, There are three types of doctrines that ought to be studied. They are Confucianism, Brahmanism, and Buddhism. See, these teachings gives us an understanding of world affairs. See, in regards to black people, if you want to understand the black Buddhist connection to Christian history, then you must get an understanding of the Brahman teachings in India. See, originally, Brahmins were black people in India who opposed or who had distorted views of Buddhist teachings. The Brahmins hated Buddhists so much that when they got into power in India, they destroyed Buddhism and they brought in foreigners in India to destroy the Buddhists. The foreigners that they brought into India to destroy the Buddhists were white people. These white people mixed with the black Indians 
and they took over the religious teachings of India and they became the new religious teachers in India whose goal was to destroy the Buddhist teachings. I want you to look at these Indian Semites. They are the people in history who we know as Semite people. These Semite people are these people in India who became the Brahmins. These Brahmins created in India the world's first sanctified racism based on skin color called the caste system in India. Now, look at the pictures of the Brahmins in India. These Brahmins would later create a religious paradigm that would not only infect India, the Brahmins rewrote world history and created what we have in the day, the false Brahmin teachings. In regards to Brahmin history, black people in America would kill another black rather than challenge Brahmin teachings in America. In fact, I, Anthony M. Elmore, would be hated by blacks, whites, and Asians when I tell about Brahmin history. It is the Brahmins who have a hold on world affairs. The best way that I can explain Brahmin history is via the movie Planet of the Apes. See, the Brahmins rewrote science and they extricated all black people out of history. Most people have no idea that they study and practice Brahmin teachings because most black people made a Brahmin their father. See, we learn about the Brahmin father from the British historian Godfrey Higgins, who names and explains the word a Brahmin, who later became known in history as Abraham, who later became the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, in order to get a clear understanding about the Brahmin teachings, Brahman teachings promote a history without signs and facts. See, Brahman's teachings are the epitome of apocryphal teachings. Please understand that the goal of Brahman teachings was, was to destroy and rewrite black Buddhist history, and they did a good job. See, the Brahmins are the masters of rewriting history and changing historical dates. There are two names in history that the Brahmins rewrote and changed the story. Now, in ancient literature, the word Hindu is nowhere to be found. There is no such thing in white ancient writings as Hindu. The, word, the other words you must understand is Judaism. See, the Brahmins created non-Buddhist religions of Hinduism and Judaism. This is what most people do not understand. White Hinduism and Judaism is the same religion. They use Hinduism and Judaism to destroy the black Buddhist religion. This is what you must understand. Now, the way the Romans rewrote history and wrote black people out of history was through false writings called the Vedas. Now, in the Anaclipses, Volume 1, 396 reads, quote, The Arabian history historians contend that Brahma and Abraham, their ancestor, are the same person. The Persians generally call Abraham, Abraham, Zaradus. Cyrus considered the religion of the Jews the same of his own. The Hindus must have come from Abraham or the Israelites from Rome. Now, the word Abraham is derived from the Sanskrit word Brahma, 
The root of Brahma is Ra, which means to grow or multiply in number. In addition, Lord Brahma, the creator, God of Hinduism, is said to be the father of all men and exalted of all gods, for it is from him that all beings were generated. Thus again, we come to the meaning exalted father. This is a clear pointer that Abraham is none other than the heavenly father Brahma. The temple of Mecca was founded by a colony of Brahmins from India. It was a sacred place before the time of Muhammad and they were permitted to take pilgrimage to it from several centuries after his time. Its great celebrity as a sacred place long before the time of the prophet cannot be doubted. This is the Anaclipsis, Volume 1, page 421. Now, let us look at the black Buddhists in ancient history in Africa. Please Google the word Haikos. Now, please, we explained that the Kushites ruled the world. In ancient India, they were known as proto dravidians Now, the Haikos were black people from India who conquered Egypt. Although they were from Asia, they were Kushites. They were known also as the Shepherd Kings. What you have is different names for the same people known as Kushites. See, for thousands of years, the Kushites in Africa interacted with their Asian brothers. Let us go back to the time of the son of a Kushite king, Shakyamuni, or Siddhartha Buddha. The Buddhists were shepherd kings. Now, this is what British historian Garfield Higgins writes on the matter. Quote, I suppose the shepherd kings who conquered Egypt were the Rajapats, or Buddhists, of the country of Raja Ridoins, or Rajasthan. The Israelites, as well as the royal shepherds, were both, in fact, Arab tribes, tribes also from Arabia on the Indus. From Raja and Pont, or Buddha, came the name the country of the Rajapunts, or royal Buddhists. From Pont was the name Buddha. The inhabitants of that country were Pali, or shepherds. From Punt was the name Buddha. Now, they came from a country called Arabia as they crossed the Western Arabia and route to the Abyssinia, Ethiopia. When forced forwards by succeeding tribes, they, they left behind them to the peninsula, the name of the Arabia which it still possesses. Unquote. Now, do not take my word for it. If you look at Ethiopians in Africa today, you will see that they look just like the Southern Indians. All you have to do is look at the Ethiopians of the High Coast and know that these people were Buddhists. They were called Naga and you see the Egyptians with the snake. Please note, the cobra is in indigenous of India, but you see the cobra in Africa. Shaka Muni Buddha was called the line of the Shakas. And when you look at the Buddhist temples in Asia, you see the lion. The lion comes from Africa, not Asia. Look at Roman history of the Bible. We find absolutely no archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science of the Bible history, but we find archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science of the Black Buddhist connection to Christian history. This is what British historian Godfrey Higgins writes 
about Nubia or the Nubians. He says, Mr. Franklin says, quote, another striking instance is recorded by the very intelligent traveler, Wilson, regarding a representation of the fall of our first parents, sculptured in the magnificent temple of Istanbul in Nubia. He says that a very exact representation of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden is to be seen in that cave and that the serpent climbing the tree is especially delineated and the whole subject of tempting of our first parents most accurately exhibited. How is the fact of the mythos of the second book of Genesis being found in Nubia, probably a thousand miles above Holophius, to the ancients to be accounted for, except that it came from Upper Egypt with the first Buddhist or Gymnosophis, unquote. You see, there is a total different interpretation of the Buddhist interpretation of the book of Genesis and that the way it is interpreted in Buddhism. Now, we have archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science that not, not only that Buddhists came from India to Africa, we connect black Buddhists to Christian history. Before there was ever any white person who called themselves Christians, black Buddhists were not only Christian, white people were worshiping the black God and his mother. Let us look at what British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about this matter. Quote, in book 152, the same work D. Abstinia, Porphyry, informs us that the very that in very old times the sacrificing of indeed the use of flesh of animals was not practiced either by the Athenians or the Syrians. The Syrians, that is, the natives of the ancient city of Ona and the Palestinian, the Iolans of whom I shall speak presently, advancing still eastwards, we find Porphyry giving an account of the Magi from Ebolus, who wrote that their history in which he states that the first and the most learned class of the Magi neither eat nor slay anything animated, but adhere to the ancient astronauts from animals. After this, he goes to the gymnosophists called Sanmedians and the Brahmins of India, whom he gives an account, and from which it appears that they have very, very little from what they were in his time. But all these actions seem to show signs of the first black Buddhist people as either no animal food or the black Pilaski or Ilerians coming to Italy and bringing the black god and his mother along with them. They not only brought the black god and his mother but they brought his house of Loreto, as I shall show in his proper place, unquote. Now, this is what I like to know. If there is any honest people who, can, who I can speak with, the first black Buddhists were not only vegetarians, they brought the, they brought the black god and his mother to Italy Hundreds of years before there was ever a religion that was officially called Christian 
white people and people over the world practice the religion of the black God and his mother. You see pictures all over the world of the black God and his mother. It was only in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea that King Constantine made the religion official. Now what he did was he added the God of England or Britain called Jesus to the name and then they added the name from the Krishnas. See the Krishnas was another set of Buddhists and they officially called the religion of the new God Jesus Krishna. However, the religion of the black god and his mother was all over Europe. At this time, we had the Kushan Empire, but the Kushan, or the Kush Empire rather, had changed its name to Abyssinia because it changed to become Christian. Now, what I want you to understand that in the Bible, how we know about the Buddhists is the word Samaritan. See, in the Bible, that was the good Samaritans. In the story of Christ, British historian Godfrey Higgins spells Samaritan, or he writes the Samaritans were the gymnasts of his Buddhists. Now, the word Samaritan means Buddha or Buddhist people. The Buddhists or passive people brought their religion or Christ or Buddha into Italy. When you see the Catholic Church, the black Madonna you are looking at is the Buddha and his mother Maya. Higgins also writes, quote, we see here that the followers of Buddha are called Gemisophis. It is observed that Nero of Ethiopia was Nero. This is confirmed by an observation of Heliodorus that priests of Nero were of a humane character and were called Gemisophis. This is what white people do not tell black people. For hundreds of years, white people in Europe practiced the religion of the Buddha all over Europe. White people practice Buddhism and you will see whites honoring the black baby child, Buddha, and his mother. I beg my viewers to stop and think for a moment. How is it that we find all over Europe the image of a black god and his mother? Just Google the black Madonna and try to find out why we have the Black Madonna. When you research such things, like the Da Vinci Code idea is conjured that it is somehow connected to forbidden secrets of Mary Magdalene. See, ladies and gentlemen, there is a secret regard in the Christian religion. And the secret is, quote, the Black Buddhist connection to Christian history. These secrets have been unraveled hundreds of years ago by British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins. Again, I repeat what he writes, quote, but all these accounts seem to show signs of the first black Buddhist people as either no animal food or the black P. Agassi or Arminians has come to Italy and bring the black god and his mother along with them. And they not only brought the black god and his mother, they brought his house of Lorenzo, unquote. You see, it is time that I bring this lecture, the original Christians were black Buddhists to a close. What you will learn is this is the same story. When you read accounts of Buddha 
and compare them with the counts of Christ, your mind says, wow, this is plagiarism. Now we act. Who wrote the story of Jesus? We did come to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who wrote the story of Jesus. When you study the Christian religion, what you will find is that these stories were engrafted from the Buddhist religion. You do not have to take my word for it. The Christian story, Sermon on the Mount, and the Buddhist story, Temptation of Mara, is the same story. Mara is called the devil. The story of the prodigal son comes right out of the Lotus Sutra. This and Christianity are the same stories. Now, the way to bring everything to perspective to understand how white people wrote black people out of the story. When you bring black people to the story, you can connect the dots. See, Buddhists, Christians, and black people in early religious history are one and the same people. The way whites changed the story was to extricate black people out of both Christian and Buddhist history. Please note, Buddhism and early Christianity is one and the same religion. Let's see how we can make the story clear. In ancient world history, whites wrote out the fact that most of the world practiced the Buddhist religion. It was not called Buddhism, nor was it called Christianity. Let me put this in a way to show you uh, in a way that you understand that in the Christian Bible there's the story of the priest, the Levite, and the Good Samaritan. In ancient times, the Buddhists or Gymnosophists were called Samaritans. There are two spellings of the word. The other is Samidia. That's S-A-M-A-N-E-A-N. -E if you Google the word, you will find also the word gymnosophist, which means Buddhist. See, gym means naked, sophist means philosophers. Buddhist, Buddhism is simply what the religion was called just a few hundred years ago. It would be very, very hard for anyone to believe Anthony L. Elmore. However, the concrete proof, the smoking gun, is that the original Christ of black Buddhists from India are those black Madonnas all over Europe. There is no way anyone can explain how white people all over Europe came to recognize and worship the black God and his mother. Please understand what Roman King Constantine in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea made official in Rome was the Christian religion. Again, he used the two names, Jesus and Krishna, that later became known as Jesus Christ. If you Google December the 25th, it is the birthday of the Buddha, it is the birthday of Krishna. All of this ties in. Now, it is very difficult and almost impossible to understand the parallel course of the two religions happening in our world at the same time. You see, there was the Brahmins and the Buddhists, there were two competing religions. Originally the Brahmins were black people in India, but they killed the Buddhists and they brought in the whites to subdue black Buddhists. The children of the whites who mixed with the blacks ruled northern India and they set up not only the world's first sanctified religion called the caste system, these light-skinned rulers known as Brahmins came up with a new religion that was called Hindu. They and their religion rewrote history and created myths that later became known in the world as history and facts. See, 
the clearest way to delineate the original Christians were black Buddhists is to separate the teachings of the Hindu Brahmins. Please understand that in ancient writings, the word Hindu, as in the Hindu religions, did not exist. The Hindu Brahmins rewrote history, they introduced myths, changed the dates, and they called it war history. There exists no archaeological evidence of Abraham, nor Moses or the Exodus. All of these stories come from the Hindu Brahmins, who rewrote history, changed dates, and appropriated black Buddhist history. The two most noted written books by the Brahmins were the Vedas and the Torah. Both books are reeked with fraud, and they came from the same source, the Brahmins. Now what you must understand is that there is, exists no archaeological evidence of the Torah of the Brahmins before A.D. Now, we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association can explain why there is a black baby, a black God baby with his mother because the black God baby and his mother were originally black Buddhists. Let me take you to some of the earliest archaeological evidence of a white Christ. The first archaeological evidence of Jesus happened in the second century with the Kushan king Kanishka. Now, please understand that King Kanishka was a Kushan king who had ruled Afghanistan. Now, he conquered India. Now, for hundreds of years, the Greeks had introduced or had adopted the Buddhist religion. Now, when he conquered India, he changed the Buddha from black to white, and he created the beginnings of the Christian religion in that in the second century AD, he created what is called the Ganhara images. And when you look at these images, for example, you see one of the mother uh, of the baby being bathed, or uh, you see the ten disciples, I mean, sorry, the twelve disciples. You see Buddha had twelve disciples, Jesus had twelve disciples. What they did was they took those pictures of the Greek-like images of Buddhists, and that is your foundation of the Christian religion. In fact, the first evidence of the Christian religion is on a Kanishka coin. On one side of the coin, you have Buddha, and the other side of the coin, we have Jesus. Now, you see, although we can show Black Buddhist Association of white people before the time of Alexander, please view the images of Alexander the Great with Buddhists. See, the ancient Greeks before Alexander was associated with Black Buddhists. There was a black man who was Socrates. He was a Gnostic or a Buddhist. Socrates taught Plato, Plato taught Aristotle. Aristotle taught Alexander the Great. Before there was ever an idea of a Jesus Christ, Greeks practiced Buddhism. What I want you to do, this is evidence of this, just Google the word greco Bactrian Kingdom along with the Indo-Greek kingdoms, the easternmost part of the Hellenistic world, covering Bactria and Sardana in Central Asia from 250 to 125 BC. Now, it was centered on the north of present-day Afghanistan. The expansion of the Greco veterans into present-day eastern Afghanistan and Pakistan from 180 BC established the Indo-Greek Kingdom, which, would, which was to last until around 10 AD. Now, you got to understand, you see, 
Let's go back into India around 185 BC. The Brahmin general by the name of Push Yamitra Sangha killed the last Mauryan king and they kicked the Buddhists out of India. Now we can go to 155 to 130 BCE to the Greek king Meander. Now he's also known as King Melinda. This was a great white Buddhist king. They got the stories of the answers of King Melinda and Buddhist history. You see, the Roman Empire was built from the Black Empire of the Etruscans, who were Buddhists. This is what white people do not tell black people. It was the black Buddhists who called who was called by the Christians who Nero fed to the lion and Rome. Let me be clear, the world's first missionary religion was Buddhism. It was the black Buddhist king of Soko who peacefully spread it, the Buddhist religion around the world. That is evidence of what King Osoka did. It got into Africa and it got all over to certain European countries. Now, let's get to this. Abraham represented the Hindu Roman Jews. Now, what you must understand is that Judaism was not a monolithic religion. The, the Jewish religion Everybody was not the same. For example, the, the Jews, there was a tribe of Jews who came to Africa from India hundreds of years before the other Jews. This tribe of Jews were called the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is the same tribe as the Buddha. In fact, the Buddha, Shakyamuni, was called the Lion of the Shakas. Whenever you see the tribe of Judah, you are going to see the Lion because the Lion represented the Buddhists. When you see the Ahsoka Etic, which we're going to show you the Ahsoka Etic, you see the Lions on the throne because they represented the tribe of Judah. You can see this at the Avadamak Temple in Africa. You see the you see the Naga, which the Buddhists were Nagas, or the Cobra Snake coming out of the Lotus Flower. And you see that beautiful throne. This is in Africa. Now, what happened was that the people all over Europe later came to accept the Buddhist religion. Now, it is only the proud black Buddhists who teach the true history that the original Christ were black and Buddhist. When you challenge, you go to the second century AD where the Kushan king changed the Buddha from black to white. This is when all of this happened. Now, all one has to do is look at the Ganhara carvings of the Buddhists and you will see the first foundation of the Christian religion whereas Christians were moved from black to white. Now, what I want all the experts to explain to me is why we find the black Buddhist God and its mother all over Europe. King Constantine sanctioned the Christian religion at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. The name again was Jesus Krishna, or Jesus Christ became officially the name of the religion. But before it was the Christian religion, this religion was all over Europe. Now, the story of Jesus and Buddha is the same story and the same God. The story of the birth, death, and resurrection come from the new religion that King Kanishka and Ashvagosha created called Mahayana Buddhism. All the story, the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Christ comes from Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism was started by King Kanishka. Now, 
let us deal with Buddhism in Asia hundreds of years before Buddhism arrived in Asia, meaning China and Japan and Tibet. See, Buddhism became Christianity before these religions even got to Asia. Now, let me tell you how Christianity happened. You see, Christianity started with a group of Buddhists. They were not called Buddhists, but they were called Essenes. Now, the Essenes were a sect of Second Temple Judaism that flourished in the second century BC to the first century. The Essenes lived in various cities, but congregated in a communal life dedicated to ascetism. Some groups practiced celibacy, they volunteered poverty and daily immersions. The Essenes again were the Buddhists. Now, we move to the Hebrew king, Alexander Janaeus. He was the king of the Hebrew king of Janaeo from 103 to 76 BCE. He was an Essene or a Buddhist. How do we know? Because he left a Buddhist coin. Now, the Buddhist coin shows the Dharma wheel. This shows that he was a Buddhist. Now, what happened was he got into a fight with the Brahmins. Now, the Brahmins were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, he got into a big fight. There was a big major war, and Alexander Janaeus disappeared, the Essenes disappeared, and we never heard any more from them until about 1940 or 46. And they found some scrolls in a cave near the Dead Sea. These were the Dead Sea scrolls. Now, in regards to black people worldwide, white people literally wrote black people out of history. Most white people are not going to tell black people that the original Christian God was black and Buddhist. Just ask white people and any scholarly Negro why you find the black God and his mother in European nations revered to this day. Now, let's bring this lecture to a close. Now, we told you that was the great Kush Empire of Moreau. Now, what happened was there was another group of black people who conquered the Kush Empire. Now, see, the black Nubian Empire lasted until it was captured and burned to the ground in the 4th century AD by Izana of Axum. That's from 320 to 360 of the Christian era. It's located in present-day Atritia, northern Ethiopia, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, northern Somalia, Djibouti, northern Sudan, and southern Egypt. King Izana, he was trained by some shipwrecked Christians from Syria, and he grew up in Ethiopia, but what he did was he changed the religion from Buddhism to the Christian religion. This is how it happened in Ethiopia. What we know today as Christianity is simply Greek-style Buddhism. The original Christians were black Buddhists, and the original Christians was Buddhists. That is us, the proud black Buddhists. I am Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing to you a new and exciting Buddhist lecture the original Christians were the black Buddhists.